Now, I'll give you something a little technical, but it's kind of interesting. I think um, it'll kind of jog your mind. Um, the Antichrist, as we know, may take the name of Christ. And let me tell you why I think that that may happen. Revelation 13 talks about the beast. And it says he has the names, or excuse me, the name of blasphemy. Now Webster's defines blasphemy as taking on the attributes of God. Not just demoting God or blaspheming God, but actually taking on the attributes of God oneself, okay? Now, um, the Bible says that the name of the beast or the number of his name, but I'm going to show you something in the Bible that will give you a tip that the number of the beast and the name of the beast may be merged together. Now watch this. The Greek text underlying the King James Bible um, that was originally written is called a Textus Receptus. Okay? And we have about 5,200 manuscripts extant today, and 99% of those agree with the King James Bible. That's why it's called the Textus Receptus. It just simply means the text received by all. It's the Greek text that has been used in the church throughout the 2,000 years since Jesus Christ has been here. And when we read um, Revelation where it says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Okay. Now the Textus Receptus has three letters representing 600 three score and six in the Greek text. Okay? Now, this represents 600, this represents 60, and this represents six. In the Greek language, they had a system wherein Greek letters represented numbers. Okay, very much like Latin numerals. All right. Now, when we look at the very first letter, um, the first letter is abbreviation for Christ in Greek. You will see that very often in Roman Catholic churches where they have like a P with an X through it. Okay? The second letter uh, would be, uh, would symbolize Christ for the Latin speaking people because X is the 21st letter of the Latin al alphabet and represents the phonetic value of KS. So to Latin speaking people, that sound would represent Christ. Okay? And then when we look at the sigma, which is this letter right here, it corresponds to the Hebrew Samak, which is the 15th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and that most nearly expresses X. So what you have here in the three languages that we have on the cross, uh, Greek, Hebrew, and Latin, you have X, 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 or Christ, Christ, Christ. Okay? And so this is not the true Christ, this is a false Christ. Now in Luke chapter 2 it says he had seen the Lord's Christ, saying that there is a counterfeit, there is a false Christ. Revelation 11 said our Lord and his Christ. In other words, there is a true Christ and there is an antichrist. There is a false Christ. Now, the Greek manuscripts and text underlying the NIV and the NASB and all the modern translations do not have these three letters here for 603 score and 6. They have 666 written out. So that clue has been completely omitted in those new versions. No one would ever find out that the name of the Christ and the number of the Christ are the same, that his name he will be the Christ, he will say he is the Christ, okay? Now, there's something very interesting that I discovered. It says there, count the number of the beast. It's telling you to count. And so what I did is I counted the number of times the authorized King James Version has the name, the full name of God, okay? We'll see it has it seven times Jehovah in the Old Testament, and um, 84 times the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Total, that's 91 times. And I thought to myself, I wonder if when I count the number of the beast, if in the new versions, if they have 66.6% .6 as many times. And I did it, and they do. When you look at the name Jehovah, and the, look at the title, the Lord Jesus Christ, they have it 60 times, or 61 times, which comes out to 66.6% .6 as many times. And so I think that's a very telling thing that's happening there. Now, um, if Satan be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Satan has a kingdom. It's called in the Bible his kingdom. Okay, it is not the kingdom of God. All right. The NIV and the NASB will tell you his kingdom. They don't say the kingdom of God. Okay? And power was given him over all kindred and tongues and nations. Who is this him that was given this power? It was the Antichrist. 
Okay? So we have he, 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 him, right there. We don't have Jesus. It's gone. Okay? Daniel tells us he shall devour the whole earth. That's the Antichrist. Okay, we have he all over the NIV and the NASB. Jesus, kingdom of God, God, the Lord, they're all gone in those instances. It's he, 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 him. And those he's and him's are defined by the Bible. Now, um, the King James Bible says in Revelation 15 that he is the king of saints. In other words, one must be a born-again child of God to be under his kingship. In Revelation 15. The NIV and the NASB changed that to king of nations. Okay, it's temporalizing it. It's not king of a certain group of people who are born again. It's king of nations, which is what the Antichrist will be. God shall wipe away all tears, the King James Bible says. Uh, the New Version say he. Once again, the generic is introduced into the Bible. Okay. Now, um, Revelation 14 says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Okay, we are warned against his name. Unfortunately, the NIV adds a name to Revelation 14. Instead of having one name, as the King James does, his father's name written in their foreheads, these are the 144,000 Jewish witnesses, it says they have, excuse me, his name and his father's name. But the Bible tells us that his name is not the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that this is the Antichrist. So I'm suspecting that they're setting people up to take his name. Okay. Now, something strange has been happening in the NIV. When it first came out, very often it would say, the name of the Lord. Okay. And in the most recent printings, now that everyone's checked it, it's starting to say his name, or the name. And they're beginning to capitalize the N. So it no longer says the name of the Lord, it's the name. Now, if you look back at the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Gassner translation, for example, it talks about the name, capital N-A-N-E-M-E. It's no longer the name of the Lord, it's just the name. And we read like his name and his mark. Okay. Uh, the Living Bible talks about taking tattoos, Isaiah 44, 5. It says that's something that's good to do. The King James is talking about something else. It says it's subscribe with his hand unto the Lord. It just meant raising his hand to the Lord. They've got you taking tattoos. Um, you will find repeatedly in the NIV, in the most recent printings, they are beginning to capitalize the name. I believe there are dozens and dozens of places where they are starting to capitalize that name word. Okay. Now, I found this picture in a Sunday news supplement. And I don't know if you can all read this. It's a young lady, and they were selling a T-shirt. And the T-shirt says, One world, why can't we be friends? Living as one planet under one... What? Under one what? That was covered up, and I didn't want to go out and buy the shirt to find out what it was, but I'd read the Bible, so I knew what it was. It was under one leader, under one roller. A new world. Okay. Um, now... I found another ad in a magazine for a new AT&T card. It also says the same thing, one world, one card. So for the people who aren't reading the new Bible versions, uh, becoming indoctrinated with the concept of the one or he, um, the media is introducing this to people. Now, there are a group of Jesus seminar scholars out west, and I'll give you a quote of what they said. They said, quote, if you think you have everything in your Bible you need, we don't. Okay, they're going to add some things. Let me tell you what they're going to add. They want to first omit the book of Revelation. Now, obviously, we have all of our warnings about the, the whore of Babylon and the mark of the beast, so they've got to omit that. In its place, they want to introduce something called the Shepherd of Hermes. Now, the Shepherd of Hermes is in the Greek manuscript, Sinaiticus, underlying the New International Version. So if the New International Version translators were honest, they would have translated the book of Hermes because it is a part of their text. 
in the Sinaiticus manuscript. My contention is if someone doesn't know what books belong in the Bible, how can they know what words belong in the Bible? But anyway, the book of Hermes tells us, number one, take the name. There it is, the name. Take the name of the beast. Number two, give up to the beast. Number three, form a one world government. Four, kill those not receiving the name. Not receiving the name. Kill them. Remember in Matthew it says the time will come and they think that whosoever killeth you does God's service, okay? The book of Hermes actually tells people, kill those who won't receive the name. When they add this on to the end of the Bible, there will be people in churches reading this, thinking, oh, we're to kill those who don't receive the name, and then they'll be out after, you know, looking for Christians there. Now, um, that's one thing that they want to add, Shepherd of Hermes. The other thing that they want to start adding are the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, when the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, it did two very interesting things. The first was, it vindicated the book of Isaiah for King James believers because the 20 manuscripts of the Isaiah texts that were found in the um, scrolls vindicated the King James readings. They found absolutely no Septuagint readings. Septuagint readings are those readings you will find in the NIV and the NASB. So all 20 of the Isaiah manuscripts found in the Dead Sea Scrolls did not indicate that there had ever been anything like a Septuagint. So if anyone says to you on the radio, the Septuagint this, say prove it, you know, because it, it wasn't vindicated with the Dead Sea Scrolls. But among the Dead Sea manuscripts were some apocryphal literature, the Sons of Darkness versus the Sons of Light and a number of other things. And in Gassner's translation, if you ever want to uh, have a, a spine-chilling afternoon, Go to the library and through interlibrary loan, order Gaspner's translation of the Dead Sea Scrolls. And it will raise the hair on your arms like nothing I've ever seen. It says, number one, that there will be a seven year period in which those who will not receive the name again should be imprisoned. A seven year period, it talks about that. It calls for the confiscation of personal property. And it says that there will be two messiahs, one religious and one political. Now, it's saying all this in a positive vein, okay? Now, interestingly, the Rockefeller Foundation is in charge of giving a lot of money to the Dead Sea Scrolls. Why would they want to do this? Well, obviously, if you can confiscate personal property, I think that would be to the Rockefeller Foundation's benefit. So. But at the Los Alamos Laboratories, where they created the atom bomb, you know, in the 30s and 40s, they are now digitizing the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, now why would the American government want to digitize the Dead Sea Scrolls? Well, if they say confiscation of personal property, there's, there's one mark in their favor, okay? They're also working on the positive identification microchip at Los Alamos. I think it's interesting that they're doing both things um, at one place. But anyway, um, they plan to add some things to the Bible. Okay, now, we were talking about the number of his name. and. Uh, a friend gave me a catalog, Whole Life Products. At the top of it, you can see the 666 Mobius. Okay. Um, in the Keys of Enoch, it, it says that initiates, those who are New Age initiates, should use the number sequence as frequently as possible. The number sequence 666. So you will find it emblazoned on all sorts of logos. Okay. Now, um, I have a number of different uh, graduate degrees, but one of my graduate degrees is a Master of Fine Arts, and I did a lot of research in the migration of symbols, and I was invited to uh, co-teach a course on the migration of symbols at Kent State University. So this is an area where I do have uh, some special expertise, but when you trace back this 666 Mobius that you see so often, um, I've traced it back to Pythagoras. Pythagoras was a Greek teacher who went to Egypt and was initiated into the Egyptian mystery religions and he came back and he gave us Pythagorean geometry. Okay, the man was obviously very brilliant. But he also, with his initiates, and you can read about this in Lempier's classical dictionary of proper names, but with his initiates he had a rule that we would, they would communicate using number symbols. Okay, and this is where all of this started. Now, perhaps it went back much further than that to the Tower of Babel or wherever, I don't know. But I could trace it back as far as Pythagoras. But um, Alice Bailey, the theosophist, says that initiate is someone who has expressed 666. So you will see the logo of Rockefeller's Trilateral Commission being the 666 Mobius. You will see Newt Ginrich's Speaker of the House Futures uh, Research Group with the logo with a 666 on it, okay? Now you've all seen 
this book that was very popular in the 80s, The Aquarian Conspiracy. Um, Aquarian simply implying that there will be an Aquarian age coming probably near the year 2000. And again, we see the 666 Mobius. These people communicating with one another. Okay. Now, of all the slides or the transparencies I'm going to be showing you tonight, I think this is probably the most important. Okay. You all have had speakers and people come in and talk about the smart card and all that sort of thing. Well, I've got the latest smart card with me, and I don't know if anyone can see this, so I made a transparency of it. But it, it's got a plastic top on it. And then the person's picture goes here, and then there's the back. Okay, now I don't know if this will... There, you can see it. Okay, it's the 666. So, when you put that six, I, I drew it a little bit darker on there because I was afraid people wouldn't be able to see. When you put it over a person's picture, you've got the 666 right on their forehead. You've got the number of the beast right on their forehead. Okay, now if you think that's frightening, Look at that symbol and <laughs> look at the logo for the New King James Bible. Okay, it's the 666 Mobius. It's identical. Okay, this is woman, is, and her name is Mary. She was on the New King James Women's Study Edition. She's holding a Bible, and there's nothing there because there really isn't anything in the New King James that's worth reading. So. <laughs> But I want you to look at those symbols. They're absolutely identical. 